Mount Fuji looks so cool. Oh, my name is Noboru. I'm Maruta, and I know everything there is to know about mountains. This is an easy question, but do you know where these are, Noboru? Hmm, I'm not sure. But they look really cold. Actually, these are all Mount Fuji. Is Mount Fuji really this rainy and windy? I know you could climb it in just a t-shirt and shorts. Unfortunately, that would be dangerous. Mount Fuji is the highest mountain in Japan, and the temperature drops 0.6 degrees Celsius for every 100 meters in elevation. There is a roughly 20 degrees Celsius difference in temperature between the summit of Mount Fuji and the surrounding flatlands, which is the difference between summer and midwinter. In fact, in the past, as many as three people have received treatment for hypothermia in a single day. In addition, the weather on Mount Fuji can sometimes change suddenly. There can be gale force winds, fog that blocks vision, sudden thunderstorms, and even hail, so you have to be careful. I completely underestimated the danger. I haven't prepared for anything. What should I do? Well, in order to enjoy climbing Mount Fuji safely and without getting lost, it is important to make preparations with an understanding of the environment on Mount Fuji. Let me give you four tips for safe mountain climbing. Please, Professor. Oh, you've changed your clothes already. There's no way I'm going to wear a t-shirt and shorts. That's the right attitude. By the way, have you ever heard of overnight bullet climbing? This is the first I've heard of it, but it sounds pretty intense. Overnight bullet climbing means climbing all the way to the top without taking long rests at any of the mountain huts, which is a very dangerous way to climb. What's so dangerous about it? When climbing Mount Fuji, the most important thing is to be in your best physical condition. Instead of going without sleep and trying to climb the mountain overnight in one go, don't forget to make a climbing plan that allows you to sleep overnight along the way. You can also submit your plan to the police or via compass and various other smartphone apps. In order to enjoy the charms of Mount Fuji and make it back home safely, whatever you do, don't climb recklessly. The time it takes to climb the mountain varies widely from person to person, even when on the same trail. Be sure to factor in the time it will take to return when making your climbing plan. So, climbing Mount Fuji includes the time it takes to get home, right? I think I'll make my climbing plan using an app too. There are other things you can prevent just by being aware and prepared. For example, altitude sickness. Altitude sickness? I'm going to get sick. People can suffer from altitude sickness during the short time spent at high altitudes while climbing, and it can lead to headaches, dizziness, and slowed reactions. It can also result in fatal conditions such as cerebral edema and pulmonary edema. That's really scary. What can I do to prevent altitude sickness? Before setting out, rest at an altitude near the fifth station for one or two hours to acclimate yourself to the atmospheric pressure and thin air on Mount Fuji. Walk at a slow, steady pace, and rehydrate frequently. There are many things you can prevent just by knowing in advance. What if I still get it anyway? If you do, the best thing is to return to a lower altitude. Stay warm, rest, and, if your symptoms are severe, descend the mountain without exerting yourself. Okay, now that I know. Wait, there's more. Mental preparedness is important, but equipment is also essential for safe climbing. You mean like a sword and shield? No. As I mentioned earlier, the weather on Mount Fuji can change suddenly. Some people get lost climbing without proper equipment. Having equipment to protect against cold, sudden weather changes, darkness, and other situations will help you avoid accidents and could even save your life. I see. The first four essentials are proper footwear, rain gear, warm clothing, and a headlamp. So, instead of three, it's four sacred treasures. That's right. Footwear should be high cut with thick soles, such as mountain boots, to prevent sprains and falls, as well as to prevent gravel from getting inside. Rain gear should include both jacket and trousers, considering the strong winds on Mount Fuji. Warm clothing is important because temperatures can drop below zero degrees Celsius before sunrise, even in summer. You should always carry a headlamp even if you do not plan to be active at night. Because if your descent is delayed due to unforeseen circumstances and you suddenly find yourself in the dark after sunset, you will be stuck. What else? What else? There is a lot of other equipment that you'll need, such as a helmet to protect against falling rocks. I've made a list so that you'll be fully prepared. Things are finally getting serious. You should prepare your basic clothing by taking into account the temperature difference. As shown in the illustration, it may be convenient to have shirts and warm clothing that you can put on and taken off according to the weather. I'm ashamed of myself for how much I underestimated it. It is important to be aware and prepared. As I said before, there are strong winds, lightning strikes, and other dangers, so don't forget to carefully check the weather information. There is a website that provides an easy way to check the current conditions on Mount Fuji from your computer or smartphone, so be sure to use it. That's good to know. I'll check it right away. But if it's this hard, then I bet many people don't make it all the way up, right? That's exactly right. 
Here's an example of an actual rescue operation. Mount Fuji is so well known that there is no end to the line of people who try to climb it without taking it seriously enough. As a result, people get injured or lost every year due to poor preparation or physical condition. In the past, there have been climbers who got stuck in strong winds and died of hypothermia. The most common type of accident is getting lost due to fatigue. How can I prevent getting lost? Before you go, build up your knowledge and physical fitness. The amount of time it takes to climb the mountain will vary greatly depending on each person's level of strength and physical condition. It is important to be fully prepared for the challenge. All right. First, I'll condition myself to be physical ready to climb MD Fuji. Once you're strong enough, we'll go over the climbing routes and etiquette to be ready when you get there. Yes, sir. There are three routes on the Shizuoka side. The Fujinomiya route, Gotemba route, and Subashiri route, right. Oh, very good. Each route has its own characteristics, so you should do some research beforehand and make a climbing plan up the route that best suits you. In addition, the colors of the signs along the trails are different for each route. You have to be careful not to take the wrong route when you come to a fork in the trail. Let's also go over the rules of climbing etiquette. Things like building bonfires, sleeping in tents, warming yourself in the restrooms, and flying drones without permission are prohibited. There are many other rules of etiquette. They are all listed in the Mount Fuji Country Code, so please be sure to check it out. It's only natural for a climber to have good manners. You've grown so much. Noboru, it's time. I hope to see you back safely after your climb. I'm physically fit. I'm mentally prepared. I have all the equipment I need. The weather is good. I'll see you later, professor. Have a good climb up Mount Fuji.